So you know that a prime number is a number whose only factors are one and itself. But actually, that is the wrong definition of prime number in higher level mathematics. In this video, I'm going to show you the right definition and rigorously prove that for the integers, it's equivalent to the definition I just stated. In higher number systems, it isn't. But drop a comment down below if you want to learn more about that. But we're going to do an introduction to rigorous mathematical proofs in number theory. So we're going to prove that an integer p is a prime number if and only if the following condition is satisfied. That p is a factor of a, b implies p is a factor of a or p is a factor of b for all integers a and b. Okay, so this is a characterization of prime numbers. We're going to prove it's the same as saying that the only factors of p are one in itself. So let's dive into the proof right now. And there are two directions here. So the first direction, which is going to be easier that for us to prove, is that if this condition is satisfied, that p is a factor of a, b implies p is a factor of a or p is a factor of b for all integers a and b, then the only factors of p are one in itself. So it is prime in the usual sense that we know. So let's dive into that proof. So how do we prove that? Well, let's assume that P has a decomposition, okay? So let us assume, so this is one direction we're proving, okay? We're proving, if you like, we're proving the direction that is going this way, okay? This is the if and only if direction. So we're gonna say that we're gonna prove the only factors of P are one in itself. So let us assume that P is equal to AB, okay? For integers A and B. This is a notation for that A and B are in Z, okay? They're integers. And we can actually only deal with positive integers in this video, okay? I've said integers, but let's just assume everything's a positive integer. Negative signs don't really matter when you're talking about factors, etc. So we're going to have this condition that p is equal to a times b. And now what we want to do is we want to show that a is 1 and b is p, or a is p and b is 1. Okay, that would show that for any such product, that's the case, that would show that p is a prime number in the usual sense that we know. So how do we do that? Well, we use the condition that we're given. If p is equal to a, b, that implies that p is going to be dividing a, b. p is a factor of a, b because it is equal to a, b. So in particular, that implies that either p divides a or p divides b. But here's the issue. If p is equal to a times b, and as I said, a and b are positive integers, that means that a and b are both between one and p. So one less than or equal to a, b less than or equal to p. So the only way that p can divide a number that's smaller than it is if that number is actually equal to it, right? So in this range, p only divides itself. It doesn't divide anything between one and p minus one. So p divides a or p divides b, therefore implies that either p is equal to a or p is equal to b, which implies that our decomposition is p times one in either order, either p times one or one times p, which therefore shows that p is a prime number in the sense its only factors are one in itself. So that's one direction of our theorem proven, and that gives us an idea of how this is going to go down. But the other direction is interesting, is if we know that the only factors of p are one in itself, how do we say something about the multiples of p, basically? Okay, we're going in the other direction. We're saying that p divides a, b should imply p divides a or p divides b. How are we gonna do that? So let's actually prove that direction. So I'm gonna put this symbol, this is the forward direction. We know that the only factors of p are one in itself. Let's assume that p divides a, b. Okay, so assume that p divides a, b. We want to show that p has to divide one of the two. Okay, so let's assume without loss of generality that p does not divide a. If p divides a, then our statement is established. We know that p divides at least one of them. So let's assume p does not divide a and show that p divides b. Okay, so assume p divides a, b, but assume that p does not divide a. p is not a factor of a, which I denote by this symbol here. That's how you do it in, in number theory. So p does not divide a. Then we're going to show that p divides b. Now, here we're going to use an important statement called Bezu's theorem, okay? And it's pretty intuitive, and I'll give you the proof in a linked video, okay? So after this video, I'll direct you to that one, and that's also a very important theorem, but I'll explain intuitively why that's true and what it is, because it's very important, and you'll see an application here to motivate you to study it. So we know that P doesn't divide A. That means that P and A are relatively prime, okay? They don't have any common factors other than one. And, and why is that? Well, we know the only factors of p are basically one and p by definition, because we've assumed that p is prime in the usual sense. If p does not divide a, the only common factor of p and a, well, the only common factors of p are one and p, so that means the only common factor of p and a has to be one, okay? So therefore, this, so this implies, so therefore, p and a are relatively prime. So we can say this as the greatest common divisor of a and p 
is equal to 1. Now, what's interesting is that in this situation that P and A are relatively prime, you can do the following. And this is what is Bezu's theorem, is you can say that there exist, so this is a symbol, it means there exists, there exist integers x and y such that ax plus py is equal to 1. So in other words, you can write 1, which is the greatest common divisor, as a multiple of a plus a multiple of p. So we know in this situation that you know x and y generally 1 has to be negative. And so in this case, we can say that ax plus py is equal to 1. And this is Bezu's theorem, that there exists such an x and y with this property. I encourage you to check out the video for the more details and understanding of that. But let's, let's first use this to actually establish our theorem. So we know ax plus py is equal to 1. So therefore, we're going to multiply both sides by b. Okay, this is going to be kind of magical. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by b. So we're going to get abx plus um, bpy is going to equal to b. Now, here's what's very interesting about this, is p is a factor of the left-hand side. Why is p a factor of the left-hand side? Because we know that p divides ab, and we know that p divides bp, right? p divides bp, p divides bpy, any multiple of p. So we know p is a factor of the left-hand side. The sum of two multiples of p, it's also a multiple of p, using the fact p divides a, b. But that means it has to be a factor of the right-hand side, right? Because the two sides are equal. So therefore, we know that p divides b. And that is going to be our proof. We've shown that we assume p didn't divide a, and we showed that p divides b. If you're loving my content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks so much to Alex and Nathan for their ongoing support on my channel on Patreon. It means a great deal to me. And if you want to support my channel, you know, liking my videos, watching my videos all the way through, or, and sharing it with friends, family, students, classmates, and even supporting on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member, whichever you prefer, really makes a huge difference for me. I'm trying to build a library of infinite elite math education. Thanks so much for all your support. And now I'm going to direct you to the other video I told you, Bezu's theorem. Check it out here. It's going to pop up on your screen. It's going to explain why you can always find x and y in this way. And it's a beautiful video and it's very fundamental in number theory. So I want to show you and help you master number theory. I'll catch you in that video or another fun video you may love that's going to pop up on your screen here. And I'll see you in either of those. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.